Hey friends, this is Squigs, and we are back with some more Lunar Magic tutorials. We've opened up our Super Mario World ROM, and today we're going to learn about Overworld events. And those are the events that take place after you beat a level on the Overworld. So without further ado, we're going to... This is the screen right where you open up Lunar Magic. You're going to click right up here at Open Overworld Editor Window, the little castle. And now we are in the all-too-familiar Overworld. Um, so this is our Super Mario World Classic, just a regular ROM I opened up. And uh, basically... So first I'm going to show you how to identify what events are going to play in your level. So by selecting this little um, ghost house here, selecting a tile with a level, and hitting this yellow button, you can see event to activate when above level is passed. Now event 1 is going to activate when you beat this level right here. So I'm assuming this will probably be event 0. It's event 3. I don't know what event 0 is in this game. Whatever. Okay, anyways, so event 1 is going to pass when this level is beaten, so we're going to go check out event 1. So by moving over fr away from 1616 editor mode and over to layer 2 event editor mode, which is the little hill with the star on it, click on that, and now we're in event mode. So, you can see it says down here, layer 2 event mode enabled, and that is the area where you'll be able to see what event you're on as well. So by hitting page up and page down, first I'm going to hit page down, so we're at event 00, zero right now. I guess nothing happens at event 0. Um, as far as I can tell, yeah, nothing happens at event zero. Whatever. Anyways, we'll go up to event one, and we'll see, during event one, all this stuff changes. Right? See, we're at event zero X1 right now, and, um, by hitting, now that, we use page down and page up to cycle through these entire events. As you can see, this is, this is showing you the map as it is at the beginning of the event, so you don't see anything change, but if we go to the, the event after it, we can see how the map looks after that. Or, by selecting the event and using the home and end buttons, we can cycle through each piece of the event that is going to happen. So you can see first that builds, then these hills start to grow. When they turn blue, that means no more changes are going to be done, but you can see those hills are still going to grow because they're orange. Boom. So there you go, and then you're done. Now we're on event two. And, uh... Yeah, so as, as you saw down here, it says event one and then the step number as well. So you can have a bunch of steps per event. That's great. Now event two, I don't know where that is, but event three builds that. Nice and easy one. Event four builds that probably, yep. We're just going to keep going until we find an event for this. Okay, so this is the other thing I wanted to talk about. This is event, event seven, right? But this level has a secret, a secret exit, right? And, um... As you saw, possibly in that earlier menu, the, um, I'll, I'll bring it up again, but there's only a, you don't get to choose what event triggers when your secret goes off. So event 7 here is going to do this, this path. That means you have to leave event 8 open in order for the secret exit, because whatever it's your event is your normal exit, it's just going to increment it by 1 for your secret exit. So you'll see event 8 is to build this pathway. Same thing with this one. We'll have, oh, well, we'll have 9 here and then 10 there. See? So, like, yeah, always, you got to leave an extra event open. It doesn't really matter what order you put them in, I don't think. Like, I think you could have event 200 be your first event. It would be fine, as long as 201's open for that secret exit, if you need it. Anyways, so, now that you know how to cycle through the events that already exist, using page up, page down, or home and end to cycle through the individual steps, um... Show you how to first. I'll show you how to delete all these these, these events that come with the world because you don't want to leave them on there. Basically, hold page up until um, you can't hold page up anymore. You can see this is just going up. We're already at the end. Event zero seventy seven. Now I scroll out using control and uh, scroll wheel down, and then I could just select all these fucking events and then just kapow, delete them. Gone. Those events are fucking gone. So now I'll show you how to make them. Basically. Um, we're gonna go, um, we'll go back to editor mode first so I can show you something over here. All this area over here, these are your event tiles. That means for everything you want to change, um, for everything you want to change, basically, you have to have either a 2x2 two two that can change on the map, because you can only change things in 2x2s, two or one of these bigger tiles. These are for your large events like Bowser coming out. It just changes all these tiles at once. Um... I usually do everything in the 2x2 two two until... I don't really use anything that this big, but I haven't done too much with my overworld yet. Um, anyways, so, just wanted to show you that. If you wanted to say, like, um, I want to make this tree turn into a stump. for It's going to look ugly, but whatever. If you want to have a stump, just add that tile right there. 
It'll be part of your little um, tile thing. And then we'll do... Oh, no, that's good. That's good enough for now. That'll illustrate the point. So let's actually grab a key. Uh, by the way, to cut and paste things, you just select them and then right-click somewhere. Took me a while to figure out. Whatever you're selected will um, copy when you right-click. So that's how you move shit around if you are not familiar with this overworld. It's a little bit clunky to use, but once you get used to it, it's not bad. Anyways, let's go back to start here. We'll even put a tree so we can show our tree chopping down animation. And, um, yeah, we'll do this event right here. So back here, we check our event. Again, it's event one. And um, then we can use our page up, page down in our event selector mode to get to event one. So we're going all the way down here. We're on event one. Perfect. Okay. So event one. Oop. Using home. No, wait, no. That's not how we do it. I'm sorry. First, we need to open uh, this this pathway right here, the cleared out pathway, layer two event tile selector. And this brings up the selection of all those things we blacked out over there. So you can see all these big tiles can be changed in big chunks. And uh, if you scroll down, you'll have all your... You'll have all your little your little two by twos, and you can even see our little tree is there on the next page. So um, this part's kind of annoying because you have to find the two by two that matches what you want to change. But I think this one's the first one. Basically, you just start cut and pasting right like this. As you cut and paste, um, as you cut and paste, it should build the events in order for you. So if you do everything perfectly the first time, you're all set. Like it'll just it'll be really easy. But uh, going in there and editing them after it can be annoying. So um, I'm gonna go back to the beginning of the event so you can see what we did so far. Event zero one, you can hit home, bang, bang. So that's step zero and step one. And now just by being selected on step one, we can add step two. We don't have to do it all in an order like I just said. It just gets a little bit confusing if you don't do it all at once. So, where is this tile right here? Is this it? That's not right. Um, this is probably the most annoying part. And if you have to build your own, it gets even worse. And then I guess we will have our tree chopped down afterwards. And we will reduce that to nothingness. And... I guess we'll play around with a couple of the bigger events, too. Where is it? We'll put this... No. We'll have this come out of the ground. Just off in the corner. You can just layer them right on top of each other like this, and they'll come out in order, replacing the one before it. So, yeah, it gets a little confusing to step through it and see which one you're on and all that. But um, it's not too bad once you get the hang of it. It's a little bit weird at first. So we'll close out of this now, and then we'll go back by hitting page down to the beginning. Our event zero is nothing in this hack. Our event one, we can see all the areas that we changed are now pink. And um, by scrolling through it with home and end, oop, home, home to go forward, we can see it. Bang, 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 chop down, get rid of that hill. Bowser's coming for some reason. Ah, there we go. So, <laughs> those are our events. That's, it's basically as easy as that. Um, we'll save this, and I guess we'll, we'll go check it out in real time. Let's, oh my god, this is probably too loud and bleeding in. I have to keep my volume way low so the speakers on my headphones don't pick it up. Actually, this new, new set of headphones that I've been using might actually not have the same problem as my old one, but who knows. Go to Yoshi's Island 1. Ooh, a little bit of lag. I think I, it's because I have everything, everything open at once. Sorry about that. Um, and you know, the, the Z-SNES that comes from the Lunar Magic always lags a little bit for me. Like, it's not like playing off just a Z-SNES by itself. I don't know why. In particular, if it's launched through Lunar Magic, it gets laggy, but I've noticed that in the past, just um, testing my hack and stuff like that. I can't even do, like, the speedrun strat for this level because it's just too laggy. Okay, so... I don't know why I'm getting power-ups and shit, like... Oh, it'll make it easier, I suppose. And we made it. 
So, let's see our wonderful event in action. Oh, I forgot that most of the Bowser thing was going to get cut off. Because there's actually, um... There's actually a map outside the border area of this. Like this, I can't really show it with my mouse, but um, let's see if I can turn it off so you can see it. Yeah, see how you can just turn off? There's like actual map underneath the border. It's layer three for all you with ZSNES if you want to poke around. Just hit three. It'd be cool to write a little secret message in there in your hack or something, like for one of the maps you weren't going to use or something, just write something for people to find. I think I might do that. Um, anyways, thank you so much, friends, for joining me for this tutorial. I hope it was helpful. Uh, this one was recommended to me, I believe I mentioned, by LaFox. Um, if you have any recommendations, especially for the tutorials and stuff, I'd be more than happy to to do what you want to see. Um, I, I don't always know what to make for the tutorial videos. I haven't really decided which ones I want to do. God damn, that's so laggy. So yeah, if there's anything you want to see while I'm still trying to figure out the whole tutorial aspect of this channel, please let me know and I'll do them. And yeah, I hope you all enjoyed it and I hope to see you all next time. Take it easy, my friends.